All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the stream. I hope you're well. I hope you swell. Loads of people rolling in for the beginning of your stream today. Holy moly. We don't normally have quite this kind of showing at the uh, beginning of a broadcast. But how are we? We all okay? Apologies for not streaming yesterday. I feel as though I should have streamed yesterday because obviously we had the sudden uh, victory in limited life and everything like that and to ride that kind of hype and success. But um, it was already pre-arranged far in advance that my family were coming uh, yesterday. Um, so they were here on Friday and then yesterday and then uh, they left this morning. So we are freed up this afternoon to talk about law. Um, so for those of you that are unaware, which is probably going to be very few of you, uh, spoilers ahead from this point onwards. Everything is going to be super duper spoilery. Um, but basically on Friday evening, the episode went up where I won Limited Life. Now this has ruffled a lot of jimmies. A lot of pajamas have been scrunkled um yeah a lot of people either unhappy with the way it went down people that you know god forbid there would be like a betrayal or something that is dishonorable you know what i mean like it's it's been a bit intense the comments like they've not really bothered me because i knew it was coming i know how the internet is all that sort of stuff but um yeah it was very much people going a bit overboard with the comments i've had everything from people trying to like psychoanalyze me telling me who i am as a person and that i'm a narcissist and that i'm unprofessional and this that and the other through to like oh you know these are your friends how could you how could you do that to your friends things like that all the way through to and i guess trigger warning but people telling me to kill myself like it is genuinely been the whole range the whole array of every kind of hate and character uh attack that i could receive so you won't have noticed it yourselves because my filter on my minecraft channel the comment section um is really broad because the yogs cast have been going for you know over 10 years um and they were the biggest thing back in the day so they got comments like that all the time um so yeah basically our filter is really good so it has filtered out a lot of stuff and i mean a lot of stuff and I've basically gone through and like manually removed all of those uh comments i've let through ones like people are allowed to not enjoy the ending they're allowed to be like oh like i didn't enjoy that ending as much as third life limit uh, you know double life whatever um but when they're not being like productive with what they're saying like they're allowed to give an opinion but when they're just saying things to be hurtful i was like nah i'm gonna delete that comment or not allow that one to get through the filter um and going through that and just kind of to touch on that for a moment like we'll take the we'll take the role play hat off for a moment literally as we were stood around having this really awkward flat boring exchange about oh let's get down to like one hour each and let's do this and let's do that and things like that i did try to i mentioned this on friday i did try to actually trigger a betrayal on scott then to then have impulse swing an hour or two and it all become a bit more of a of a kerfuffle but i think impulse had already felt quite defeated at that point because i hadn't realized really in the moment i didn't realize that scott had just clapped him like four times um and also scott was so far ahead on hours and stuff so impulse was very much of the kind of like it's over for me kind of mindset and then i think scott was very much in the analytical mindset of like oh no let's try and have a fair fight xyz um and we just lost all the momentum i mean i don't know how obvious it is from the editing just how long that period was but that thing where we were dying and coming alive again and stuff like that that took ages mostly because i was wanting to do some kind of betrayal moment within there um but i didn't right click on the bed at spawn like those two had so when I died, I went all the way back to the thing that was beneath the Mean Gills base and stuff like that. Um, so that's basically how that was going. And literally, as that was all happening, like this kind of really boring, slow, you know, decision making on what we were going to do. Um, I literally had Grian like DMing me on Discord being like, he literally said the words, for a good story now is the time to turn on scott and that was a couple minutes after i'd already tried to initiate one by dumping lava on scott for the first time um and then i said i've already tried to do that i think everyone's a bit too exhausted slash focused on what's going on and green was like it's painful and i was like no i know <laughs> but then like it played out the way that it did and then um as soon as it was all done and dusted and everything finished green just messaged me and was like 
that was the right move so like it's the thing where i think i'm in this really weird position within the limited life or the life series in general where all the empires lot i've got their diehard fans all the hermitcraft guys i've got their diehard fans um whereas me like i do have an audience don't get me wrong but i think my audience is rational and calm and like they understand that entertainment comes first versus you know m mechanics and things like that um and i think that if i were to ever do something wrong or something to hinder one of the other players i knew for a fact that i would get a ton of flack for it but also i don't care <laughs> you know what i mean like it's i know for a fact that the people that i collaborate with they don't care they were doing it for entertainment purposes as well we're all on the same wavelength and like we've said many a time before if it makes it to the episode it's seen by the public then everybody that was in the session agreed with it everybody that you know took part in it agreed that that was the decision the right thing whatever it may be now because i've not had a chance to actually go through it i wish i had i, I do have the recording of after i killed them and then um you know they obviously did the the two thunder strikes to end the series out on me um but i've not had a chance yet because i've had family here to actually look through the post post session audio because i feel like that would also give a bit more evidence and credence to my thing that i'm saying of everyone was happy with it like you know all the people that were still ghosts and even Imp impulse and scott and stuff um but maybe i'll have a little look through that tonight and maybe on stream tomorrow i can share that so you guys can see that everyone is legit cool with it and chill with it in regards to uh the way that thing's finished and also as well i think it was a fun finish i think it was it was a shock pull twist betrayal moment um like recreating the third life ending wasn't going to work that well because we didn't have me and scott didn't have quite as tight of a connection as scar and green did because they were really like the figureheads of one half of the war you know what i mean so like those two having this battle inside of a ring of cacti visually it's cool like emotionally it's cool it all works really well but as much as me and scott were always together there was always that kind of like looseness to our dynamic and things so nobody wanted a third life ending uh last life ended with you know go to the four corners run to the middle have a bit of a scrap it was okay but it wasn't the best like it was it just sort of ended as is um and then double life ended with um basically someone giving over the victory which is a very you know you know noble thing to do and things like that but from a storytelling perspective this is a death game you know what i mean this is a death game it's last one standing wins this that and the other and everyone's allowed to play it out however they want but that's not the sort of ending that i would want to participate in um but for scott and pearl it was really nice and then you know i love me a good pun and the whole tilly death do his part was really really cool and now we've got limited life which was a betrayal it was a dishonorable kill when we agreed on some game rules and done that but like everybody have seen saying on socials is that the overarching game rule of the life series is be the last person standing doesn't matter what you what you got to do to get there what you've got to do to achieve it that is the overarching goal and it's weird it's like when people turn red they can suddenly attack everybody and reds can do what they want they're completely unhinged yada 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 but then it's weird that the audience or some audience have this expectation that when you get down to the final few suddenly the reds have to lean back into nobility and honor and things like that and really if anything we've all been on an absolute tirade and that actually doesn't really fit with the narrative and the tone of the world and especially not from my storytelling like i've been gaslighting and betraying and being just a real nuisance for the entire series this wasn't just a split second last minute decision um it was something that i teased through the law which we're going to go through today and you'll see what the wording of things that i put in there um as to why i did what i did and again if it didn't work out for me then that's fine that's all good it wouldn't work out and i wouldn't get to do the extra law drop and things like that but um yeah i just kind of wanted to put that out there and kind of acknowledge the people that have recognized that you don't want a repeat of what you've already seen slapping each other like wet fish until you die is not entertaining and i was kind of reinforcing that this is a death match and i quite, i really quite enjoyed doing that so i knew i was going to catch a lot of heat for it and me tweeting and you know kind of uh acknowledging that people have been going to the extremes of you know hate speech and things like that for it um it's not me being upset about it i expected it and even if the things they're saying are horrible i've been in this game for like 
15 years if not more doing youtube like i am so stone skinned and i have such a strong sense of self and self-love and kind of like you know confidence in my decisions that i make uh and also the respect of my peers and you know understanding from them uh that the comments genuinely don't affect me but it's good to call them out to almost hold a mirror up to those people to say no this isn't okay you got to chill out you got to calm down <laughs> omg i can't believe you betrayed and killed me i can never forgive you for that you monster i don't understand how you could do that <laughs> it was the perfect move yeah it was fun it was fun it was good it was really really good so there you are um so i guess what we'll do is we've got the law to delve into today that'll be really fun also everybody say hi to scott um we've got the law to delve into today but maybe we'll go through the episodes um and kind of chat through a few things I guess really the law is like the main i guess i mean okay i tell you what let's do it this way we'll do the law as a separate section in a little while um because the law is also tied to the actual ending the finale of it i guess i want to open up the floor right now to anybody who has got questions regarding just limited life in general the life series the mechanics uh you know any moments questions like general life series questions as opposed to specifically character martin questions to begin with um and then we'll sort of like we'll play it out from there move this over to this window where is it there we go nice uh let's have a look oh the symbolism okay yeah so i've seen a few people talking about this so um i still don't fully understand it but basically there's a lot of fan art that circulates around tumblr and things like that in regards to the life series of the various winners each being represented by a different celestial icon whether it be the sun stars moon planets so on and so forth uh and there's this ginormous like <laughs> debate and like um uh wait what was that sorry oh sorry yeah yeah um but yeah basically there's this thing of like am i a meteor am i uh mars because apparently martin apparently martin means mars or something i don't know what that's about but then there's also people saying about being earth but then given the season that i've won in and my character being a mean gill and being on the coast and things like that um there's all these decisions between like do you do a bit of like you know you do a bit of c as well um and honestly i don't feel strongly enough about any of them to kind of decide that really like i know that's really annoying but I, I definitely feel as though that should be a community decided thing you know what i mean the only thing that i will say is that i feel as though the comet works in regards to the wider lore of character martin which will which we might not even actually touch on today but in the long run meteor fits things nicely um but in terms of looking at it just as the life series then maybe one of the other ones i mean to be honest even meteor would work even within the life series because i never stay put i'm smashing and crashing into every base every group dynamic things like that um so each can work each can work that's good why didn't the death message pop up when someone was not fully out um so the death message never appeared in chat and in the second to last session um we recognized that it wasn't coming up on the middle of the screen or giving people enough of an insight because if you weren't within audible range of the lightning which i wasn't for i think literally every death <laughs> in the second to last session in episode seven um so i said in the discord oh it'd be good to have this and i edited some into my episode uh in post but we had them added in later on and one of my favorite things i noticed it must be very quickly in some of these let me pull my pull up my episode but there was something that i noticed about the this person is out message and it's that the mechanic of minecraft when you do a title and the subtitle is um you have to do the commands in a very particular order you have to type slash subtitle and then the message which is the smaller text that appears in the center of the screen and then you have to type uh slash title then whatever you want the big wording to be and all the different colorings and how long the title is going to appear for and then when you press enter both of them will appear on the screen now because it wasn't programmed uh so that the um so that the subtitle was cleared before each title happened you'll notice here that like uh you got this here where scar ran out of time that all looks normal that all looks fine but what i wanted to show you was the where is it would it be about here where i killed scar oh it doesn't even happen at this point oh i guess maybe because the first person hadn't fully fallen yet let me just try and find another one of my my time gains 
Because basically the time gains towards the end would say... Obviously, even that one doesn't say it. Oh, so I wonder when the change happened. Ooh. Unless I didn't leave any... Oh, no, there it is. Got it. There you go. So there were occasions where it said plus 30 minutes ran out of time. And I just thought that was really funny. Um, but yeah, so the, the pure reasoning for that was it wasn't in the programming in episode 7. We got it put in for episode 8. And it worked pretty well, I think. You, We were all aware of when somebody went fully out of the live series uh, in episode 8, which is good. So there you are. Oh, my God. Um, do, do, do. It's not really connected to limited life, but is there a hierarchy in the society of watchers or higher creatures? We'll save that for the law section. We'll save that for them. Uh, how do you feel this series went? In my opinion, the deaths had a lot less impact and people could fall off a ladder twice at the start of an episode and no one really cares. You know what? I think it was actually a nice relief for us. Um, like, I think in the end, what, how many deaths was it? So I swear on Tumblr, somebody said it was like 150 plus deaths in the end, something insane like that. Um... But I actually think it was quite nice for us because I think we've all done the sneaky placing traps and this, that, and the other. Um, but it was actually really nice just to kind of let loose, let rip. And you could have things as absurd as Skynet and you could be a bit more PvP. And that's one thing I will say, actually, is that somehow I drew with Green for most kills in the series. And I was talking to Cherry about this, saying that I don't really remember a lot of the kills, <laughs> to be honest. There was even, the, I think it was the episode after I'd killed scar by accident with the dripstone and like b-dubs for time and stuff at that point i already had loads of kills and i just didn't remember them and it wasn't even necessarily a case of remembering the lot uh, the failures and only remembering the successes or the other way around sorry only remembering the failures and forgetting the successes it's just i spent i spent most of my season trying to place traps even at the beginning or the latter end of episode seven i was placing traps in the hopes of getting people with classic kills because I think compared to most of the roster, I'm a stronger pvp -er. uh, Not stronger than, like, Scott, and evidently not stronger than Pearl. Um, but I'm certainly on the, the higher end of the, kind of, the, the, the roster in terms of PvP. So I didn't want to get a lot of my kills that way. So I was I was showing a lot of restraint. And I have done that in a lot of previous seasons as well. I, I always hold back until either the second to last or the very last episode. Um, which... I don't know, maybe that kind of ruins the illusion a bit for people. But I do genuinely enjoy being sneaky. I like being a, a little gremlin going around the map and stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of like a conscious decision on my part. And also, yeah, it's for the it's for the enrichment and the, the preservation of content. Because killing somebody with a sword or something like that is not always the... Um, it's not always the most fun thing to watch it's some it's it's nice to give people something to watch that is a different kind of death experience or kill experience to anything you could see if you just logged on mtc island you know what i mean if you go on island play sky wars or sky battle whatever it's called um you will see that experience and it's nothing new but people using shulkers uh, not shulkers using um like skulks and tnt minecarts and things like that you don't see that every day and it's a really nice way of doing it where was that thread because scott was just mentioning about the top killers um cherry sent me that that tumblr post which actually has all the kds on it yeah here we go um let me zoom this in a little bit there we are so this is this is what i got sent so most kills this is just for limited life um most kills this season was 18 from me and green 17 from scott and then joel and scar scar being in a top frank position is very cool by the way like really cool i love that for scar um and then you got most kills in a single episode i don't remember which episode i got eight kills it says episode eight which is the finale but i don't remember getting eight kills in the finale like what what kills did i get in the finale i finished off etho i got one big b kill in the water scar on the stone bridge i'm struggling to think of my other ones oh and impulse and scott obviously takes me up to five i can't think of the other three you killed impulse like three times i did i killed scott twice no this is most kills in a single episode not 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 overall i'm talking just in this is saying eight kills in episode eight so in the finale what are the kills that i get you got pearl two i think I don't know if I did. And the thing is, right, is as much as I think I'm one of the stronger PvPers, my PvP skills were naff during uh, this season, to be honest. 
Can you all imagine my kill count if I'd have been red earlier, right? Scott would have been slaying. You shot somebody at the border. That was Big B. Yeah, I, I counted the Big B one. Um, but yeah. According to this in the Limited Life series, my KD ratio was 1.38. So as much as like, you know, me winning wasn't quite what people were expecting. I, I put in some work th that season. Statistically speaking. <laughs> but yeah. I love that mine was a perfect one. Yeah, yeah. You got a bang on 17-17. I love that. If you could add somebody new to the life series, who would you pick? Ooh, who would I pick? I'm trying to think of people we've collaborated with who I think would be a good fit. Honestly, Sausage. I think Sausage would fit perfectly into um into the into into the series. I think Gem would as well. Gem Gem's little appearance showed that Gem would be a really good contender. Like Gem Gem had that ability to go along with like the role play of pretending to be Cleo and stuff like that and obviously has the uh, the Gemini Slay uh rank as well that would be good and I think yeah somebody mentioned about Fwip as well Fwip would be good because Fwip would be good at coming up with intricate and tricky ways of killing people you know what I mean like we I only got a glimpse of it because I've not played with Fwip much in anything but Fwip has got such a an analytical mind whether it's the 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 guides that he's made recently for Minecraft Legends or if it's um when we played on the 30 day survival server and doing the whole curse of vine in pumpkin head and stuff like that like he's definitely someone who can think a few a few parts ahead owen yeah to be honest owen beck and eloise would also be great additions to it they would be really really good they've got that from having done rats with them and you know we've done death swaps and things like that they've got good mechanical knowledge of stuff but they're also very willing to play play up to the content like I think that's the th I think that's the, the the biggest driving factor of being in the life series is not playing for preservation but playing for the moment like allowing yourself to get killed or doing stuff for style points and for entertainment purposes over the appearance of seeming good at the game because I think that's where a lot of other SMPs or a lot of other creators find themselves bottlenecked and they find themselves becoming honestly just quite miserable is that they have to keep up this appearance of being just incredible and cracked at the game but when the focus is on chaos and fun, um, then I think that's a lot more fun, honestly. That becomes way more way more interesting to watch. Ollie, yeah, Orion Town, Ollie would be good. To be honest, most of the Rats cast would be good because the Rats cast are willing to do it for the bit. And I think that's the main thing you need. You need people that are willing to do it for the bit. They're happy to collaborate with just about anybody. They, you know, meld into alliances, but... They don't get upset or butt her about like any kind of betrayals and stuff like they understand it's part of the wider narrative and part of the sort of the the improv nature of the the server which is good so yeah it's cool do you think if perla killed you in the water the ending would have gone differently like you not winning i reckon potentially yeah i reckon it probably would have done i mean perla has been a end game player in every series that she's been in like she's been really 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 strong um throughout so yeah, that that could have changed things because i probably would have then been down to probably barely one one and a half deaths away from being out so those clashes with impulse and stuff like that had scott not swooped in sooner um i probably would have gone out a bit earlier um yeah now that you've shown your expert building skills with the hourglass will you now be applying to hermitcraft uh no because that build was not mine <laughs> it started as mine and then it was it was improved upon by uh somebody on tumblr or somebody from stream chat um my building capabilities are very small which is why i think i would struggle to join any long-running smp whether it's you know empires hermit other ones that exist like i just don't think i have that i don't have that skill I've been practicing that skill. Don't get me wrong. I've done some homework that Fwip and Sausage gave me on socials. Um, so, I, you know, it's a skill I can brush up on. It's, I think my issue is I just don't have a lot of time between being, you know, a parent and trying to do this stuff as well as streaming. Um, streaming's not something that I want to compromise on for the sake of YouTube content. You know what I mean? And it doesn't mean that I can't do the two together. Um, but yeah, I think my building skills to even be slightly more easy on the eye if I were to join an SMP um need to see a little bit of a bump you know what i mean they need a little bit of a uh bit of a, a bit of a quality upgrade so yeah this was good any more life series questions can be about life series as a whole or limited life specifically 
uh, before we move on to talking about lore. Lore, 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 lore. And poor Cherry as well. Last night, I uh, lore dumped a load of stuff on Cherry. A lot of stuff Cherry had already figured out because Le Cherry's very attentive to the details of everything and has like a similar mindset to me. But yeah, Cherry, Cherry, what was it Cherry called it? Was it R Rubber Duck? I think it was called Rubber Duck Engineering, which is basically where you have like a rubber duck on your desk and you, you talk to it and explain your thoughts. But it was more than that because cherry cherry is one of the few people that i know can one keep a secret and two actually knows and understands my law um which i'm very very grateful that i have somebody like that around me um because my my law has been a very solitary writing experience so far so even just to sort of speak to cherry who might remember details that i won't and say this would make sense right like if i did this that would make sense based on the story so far um so yeah not just the thumbnail artist cherry is um Law, law fact checker, in a way. <laughs> That's good. Uh, when somebody's out of lives, are they allowed to connect back to watch if there are still a few sessions left to record? Yeah, I, I couldn't imagine there'd be a problem with that. Um, historically, people will only linger around for the remainder of their session. Um, so, you know, I think B-Dubs has done that in the past and things like that. But typically when people go out earlier on, then they'll they'll just chill. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, there's, 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 there's not a rule against it because I... I don't think it's even the sort of thing that affects anybody like their name being in the tab list and that's all that happens i think maybe if there was like i don't think anybody minded it in this session actually you know in the finale where like scar and everybody were like giving etho direction to stuff because that was incredibly helpful for finding very singular number of players on such a big landscape um and again it's doing it for the bit people aren't bothered about ghosting you know like you get in in other games i think we're we all enjoy seeing you know the clockers talking to dad from the grave and things like that and the whole family thing it's again like i'm sure some people if they're a sweats are like no don't tell them where i am oh god how am i supposed to hide when they're ghosting but everyone in our series is like that's quite funny <laughs> just funny isn't it <laughs> so it's um it's good i really missed the ghost combos at the end of the session who uploads who uploaded the ghost pov i did um i put that up as an unlisted video i think it was um for last life i don't think i did it for double life but i did for last life just because um it was just interesting seeing what happened you know what i mean but like i said i'll go through my uh my limited life one and see whether it's you know all right to put out there we'll see i like this format because it kept all players relatively close together in terms of life left yeah it was a nice slow trickle i think we found that the boogeyman worked well as a mechanic for um steadily but you know you know narratively lowering the amount of time um that the series would take uh, but that mixture of like you know the boogeyman and also having time trickling away as well as it half an hour leaving the pool every time he kills somebody it was a nice nice way of chipping away at stuff it was good i don't know if we would have quite as large of a health pool if we were to do a future season i think we've enjoyed the chaos and stuff but i think there was a lot of repetition in the types of deaths that we had um and I, th I think we've all kind of agreed we don't want another skynet in future seasons like we, <laughs> we are sufficiently done with sky skynet we are you know we're well past that now boogie changed its role yeah so boogie actually kind of became a bit of a um a bit of a bonus rather than a burden didn't it um i think people actually quite liked having that in the end that was good ladders banned now nah, ladders will stay I'd be intrigued to know how many people died to ladders in the series and whether that kill count was any higher than some of the players in the series. I think that's quite funny. I think that's quite a funny idea. Ground net next. It's just going to be an elaborate underground sequence of tunnels that just have minecart TNTs running around in them constantly. Can you imagine? Skiz had no idea what he was trademarked. Uh, what? Wait, what was that? Skiz had no idea what he was trademarked when he came up with it oh wait you want about affirmation station or no that was something that i came up with and i think a lot of people started to think that scott came up with it and i was like no it was me so i like left it in my episode just to see oh god here we go scott's just sent me this so scott said this is funny from the reddit someone ranking our abilities like top trump's cards here we go let's have a look at this um so im tim and jim uh traps three hunting three de decisiveness one 
<laughs> God. Wait, 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 wait. Remind me. Top trumps is the higher number wins, right? It's not lowest number. Will, my, will TNT minecarts be banned at some point? No, probably not. They're the only good way of getting effective uh, trap kills, honestly. Because regular TNT has too long of a fuse and people can get out of the way. Um, oh, it is highest number. Nice. So yeah, Timmy's decisiveness is one. I can see that. Yeah, I can see that. Mumbo Mumbo's quite low, actually. A 14 overall. Traps pretty high. Yeah, I can see that. Hunting, not so bad. I feel like he's decisive. Oh, actually, no. Maybe not. I think when he has a plan, he can stick to it. But I think making a decision in the moment. Yeah, I guess, yeah. It says they're about being under pressure is a bit lower. Traps, six. Yeah, fair. Fair. Scott, traps is one. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow Scott is still... I mean, Scott joined first. Even though Scott has got a one for one of his categories. Jeez. That's wild. Does that math add up? 4, 5 is 9. 13, 18, 23, 6, 12, uh, 17. 12. Oh, yeah, I guess it does. Yeah. It just looks like... Because those numbers don't look that far apart. I was like, how has he made up another three points? But that works. That's quite funny. I like that. I like that. Uh, do you think the next uh, season ties should split up because every season they seem to ally together? No, I, I don't really have an issue with it, to be honest. Um, I can understand people maybe would like them to split up and to work with other people. But the reality of it is, is that we all have different humor styles. We both have different life experiences. We all have different uh, sort of, you know, goals, I guess, really. Um, and I think that's why... There are some people that will blend and mix up a bit more, but there are some people that will stay with their comforts. And I'd much rather people play with what they know rather than them feeling as though they're spending a whole session trying to build a rapport with people. Um, I think they should split up because that's why I want to play with them. Yeah, yeah, to be fair, I would love to. Like, I'd love to do a season with, like, you know, like Tango. See if I can turn Tang Tango's opinion off me. And that's the other thing, right? So one of the, just hearkening back to the whole martin this martin that you know horrible horrible guy um loads of people were pointing out that tango was bang on the money tango had the right read on me as my character um and tango knew exactly what i would do if if not eventually like he knew how things were going to go down you know what i mean grouping fits the law uh because kindred spirits tend to find each other in their many incarnations yeah 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 there is one question i have actually on that on that note which might affect the way that I write the law for what happened in this season. You can't really team with Pearl, Jimmy, me or Cleo. So I want to play with some others. Yeah. 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 I think the thing is, is as much as I ever team up with people, I'm just a massive wanderer anyway. I play a relatively solitary game, like a solo game, but I'll have my person of interest that I check in with and I have their back until I don't have their back until my sword goes in it. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then things change uh that's where the uh the, the pace shifts the mood changes um so yeah there we go uh on twitter i compared the vtuber debut versus the limited life finale and it's so similar martin i'm going insane yep there are similarities i keep telling you that i've not been answering the question specifically of is the limited life law and the um or the, the life series law and the VTuber law connected. And I've, I've been ignoring that question. And I kind of will continue to. But what I will say is that... Ah, Macau. I did wonder if anybody would clock that. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. So I'd mentioned... So somebody's just mentioned it now. Let's, let's, let's delve into the law stuff. Let's jump into the law stuff, okay? So, um... Somebody... Uh, just a few people in chat have just recognized that a little while ago I did a different stream I don't even remember what that stream was I don't think that stream was even like the last life law stream that I did I think it was just a completely different one um and you have the clip can you send me the clip is it in discord let's see what I said back then just to, just so I'm intrigued and again when it comes to all of this um a lot of the law I have kind of already pre-planned in my head but I will ask you some questions today that will affect the trajectory of the law and the decision making of the law going onwards. Because, again, I'm not I'm not an incredible author. I'm, I'm nothing like that. So some of these ideas, I want to gauge the water of what we think would sound nice canonically. It doesn't always have to be just me presenting the ideas. We can make 
you know, chat have some power. Oh, is this is this the clip? The one that's in the, the clips channel? Where is it? Where where do I find the clip? Which Discord channel is the uh, the clip of me mentioning chapter four? Oh, there it is. Got it. Let's have a look. Let's let's just see what this says first because I've not actually seen this clip just yet. Um, here we go. Let's have a nosy. Cool. Cool. You know, what? sod it. Chapter three of my VTuber lore, as I've already said, is called Into the Data Stream. Uh, I'm just going to put it out there. Chapter four, which isn't going to arrive for quite some time. And I don't even really know when or how or why I'm going to transition into it. Um, but chapter four of my VTuber's lore is called Fragment Wars. There you go. Shriekers. It's called Fragment Wars. That's fantastic. Mm. Oh. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> oh my gosh. There it is. Hello? Fragment Wars, my dude. Fragment Wars. Did you just... Mm, so good. I don't even know why I shared that. I think I just... I get I get too excited about this kind of stuff. And then I just, like, have to share it with people. Um, yeah. Um, let me do mystical. Can I get mystical music on? Ooh. This is more like... The Disney DVD experience is about to begin. So, yeah, there we go. So, yeah, okay, let's go through the law then. So, I guess the best way to do this is basically going through the episodes of when we presented, uh, when we presented different things and going from there. The music is such a vibe. The music is quite nice, actually. It sounds more optimistic, though, and I feel like the law is a little bit darker and a bit scarier than things have gone. Um, right, let me scroll down a teensy bit. Where is it? I have to go past chapter four. This is all in the same document. If this one document got out, the whole story would be ruined. <laughs> there we go. Um, okay, yeah. What episode did I have the, the first lore drop this season? Let's have a look into this. Uh, here it is. It was, I guess it would have been when Grian died, right? Uh, not Grian. Uh, Timmy died. It was episode four. Was it episode four? Wait. Oh, wait, was there law in episode four? God, I can't remember what law we had from this season. Jesus. Where was it? Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. God, I forgot about this chat. Good good catch. Good catch. All right, let's go through it. Um, So this is episode four. Let's have a look. Okay. Ten. I'm going to have to remember this and what what I was thinking when I wrote these things. Every grain that passes comes to rest. So I've seen a bunch of breakdowns of what these what these words mean, by the way. I'll tell you what, let's um let me get a notepad file up so we can um so we can like go through these one at a time. Here we go. A pillar built another test. These fickle oh. feuds unguided hands. Forever molding in the sands. Mm -hmm. The thrill to kill, the fleeting gill, all washed ashore to settle still. A single day, and then it's gone. Nice. Doomed to repeat, our will be done. Oh, we love the I will be you're done, don't we? We love it. So, as much as everyone's like, oh my God, I can't believe you betrayed him. Like, already in there it says Fleeting Gill. I was allowing myself the the opportunity to do a betrayal of Scott at some point during the series. This was a plan from entering it. Much like it was always a plan in Third Life to potentially betray Ren at some point during the course of it. So I can put the words in there and it can sound all mysterious and, you know, things like that um and it can go from there so it's you know a betrayal arc has been long overdue and i've been trying to do it for about four seasons now and i finally got to do a betrayal moment i don't feel like i really so much got a betrayal arc it was more kind of like a betrayal moment um passes. so we've got every grain that passes to comes to rest that is literally just acknowledging the passing of time and kind of uh recognizing the mechanic of the season basically a I had thought about doing a social media post, um, you know, like I did for Last Life, I want to say, where I did a watcher 
a watch a bit uh prior to the season built another test so the pillar built another test was i, I want to say it was in this episode wasn't it the, the pillar built another test was basically the beginning of the like the the watcher's influence about potentially betraying scott um so i'm pretty sure it was in this episode wasn't it where scott pillared upwards on top of um uh pillared up at the top of uh nosy neighbors i think was in this episode maybe not and then the other part of it as well is like the whole a uh, pillar built another test is basically again another layer to kind of the watcher stuff of basically putting me on a pedestal once more putting me high up above the other players for some reason the watchers have a particular interest in me and i was talking to cherry about this last night and i think that the reason that the watchers have a particular interest in character martin is because he has a more emotive soul was the was the phrase that i said to cherry i was like um i'm fun to torment and i have emotional depth in that way that you know i feel empathy in a lot of those ways but also um i have the capacity to be really honorable and really stick with the person that i'm sworn to like you know ren and things like that and obviously always trying to do the best for my teammate in, in cleo but also i have that thing in me where i'm happy to just switch on people at a moment's notice um if needs be so for example the end of double life you know as soon as that third team that third duo died i immediately turned on scott immediately start lighting him up like a christmas tree like milliseconds after um so i think that's kind of why the watch has taken interest in him and also because it's my pov so of course i'm going to be the main character of my own pov you know what i mean these also does anybody is there any is there a detail here that anybody recognizes to rest the watchers hate you yeah they do they, they fucking hate your guts <laughs> like so bad <laughs> a pillar built another test these fickle feuds are does anybody hear that i, I think it's, it's it's very audible but it's pitched down so that sound effect there if i um do you hear the dunk, dunk, dunk? that sound effect everybody you might recognize um if i go to where is it if i go to episode one what if you could do se eliminated from where is it um doo -doo -doo. Yeah. <laughs> Where's my? <laughs> I'm done getting the time. Right, all right. He's always you made are? me feel physically ill. Listen, right. my I stomach am, is I gone. Feel sick. This is such oh. a bad idea. Not the boogie so, man. Dunk, dunk. so it's just the boogeyman sound pitched down. Um, and again, another test is the whole leaning into that. Another test. So it's a very passive detail, and you might even think it's just part of the the soundtracking. But no, it was the it was the boogeyman getting getting put in. You know the another test is all linking into into that thing so that that was quite a fun little thing to do really simple detail like it's just there in the background but as we're talking about feuds uh and things like that um it's cool a having it in there. Built another test these fickle feuds um some guided hands and of course, Unguided Hand is a recognition that Ren wasn't in the series, so that there will be a slight shift in comfort and psyche for 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 character Martin in the season. Which is why it was really nice that Cherry put the Dogwarts banner on the outfit as recognition of Ren not being there, but still always being close to character Martin. Forever molding in the sand forever molding in the sands was supposed to be almost an idea <laughs> you know what's really funny is i'm gonna say a phrase right now and everyone's gonna be like oh my fucking god but i promise you this is how i imagined it was forever molding in the sands was the idea that everything would wash up onto the shore and would just be rotting on the beach so being washed up was actually a part of my thought process and my and my law writing before the whole bit with etho ever even really became a proper conversation so that's that's quite funny. <laughs> Washed up is was part of this poem. Um, the thrill to kill. Here it is. The fleeting 
kill. The thrill to kill, the fleeting gill. So just the excitement to betray somebody and the fleeting and fragile relationship of being a mean gill. So episode four, hours upon hours upon hours before I betrayed Scott, I was already sowing the seeds that this was going to happen. So as much as people think it was out of nowhere and it was a selfish move and blah, 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 blah. Like this was this was always part of an overarching idea. Um, all washed ashore to settle still. oh no sorry that line was the settle still i mean i guess the whole molding in the sands it was the idea was always that like scott would be killed washed up on the shore molding in the sands it's all it's all part of this betrayal thing this was more betrayal heavy than i thought actually this first poem a single day and then it's gone this line here honestly this a single day and then it's gone doomed to repeat i will be done it's just i needed something to rhyme with done because i like saying i will be done in the voice you know i love just whacking this on and going like i will be done i just really enjoy saying it so there you go doomed to repeat i will be done so yeah <laughs> i don't always do the i will be done um but i i do quite enjoy it I do quite enjoy it. So that was episode four. Um, does anybody know when the next lore piece was in? Because I want to say it was then episode seven was the next time that we have a lore bit. Because um, then it was the kill with the words. There was the birthday episode. And then there was the setting the traps one. So then, oh, it's actually already fast forwarded to, to the right spot, which is good. So before we get there, in fact, no, we'll go into the poem and then we'll unravel it a little bit. Okay, here we go. We need to know where he jumped off. Where did he jump? Oh, my God. Break save. Oh, my God. We'll find out. We'll find out. Oh, my God. Also, how, how distinct that moment there is when it says Solidarity died. That's why I pulled that into the final episode. Uh, and also that sound effect. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Oh, that was a question. Somebody. Oh, now it's going to be hard to remember. Somebody asked me on Twitter what the... That was it. Somebody asked what the music was called that I used uh, in the finale. Remind me, chat, when we get there, for the pulsating vignette on the screen and the pulsing in the countdown to the kill um, at the end of the series, remind me to look at what music it is. Um... Pause on pause, we paralyze. So there's a few layers to pause on pause, we paralyze. Um, this was mostly a recognition of the AFK episode with Grian, because obviously Grian in the story is a watcher who has inserted himself into the games. Um, and I guess to kind of give a little bit more clarity on what I think Grian's kind of role within the games is, is um, basically trying to, I guess, like sour the meal for the watchers. So we spoke previously about how the watchers like to feast on the negative emotions and everything that the various life players experience throughout the series. And between each death game, they feed on them, they allow them to recuperate, and then they put them back in for another game, rinse, repeat. But when uh, Grian goes in there, he knows what is going on. And Grian just brings this like really cheeky, silly, infectious kind of like chaotic side to everything that makes everything significantly more fun than it is scary or angry or angsty um and that's kind of what green's role within the story has kind of been playing out as so far is that green always kind of brings a more joyous joyous tilt to the entire experience which actually then um you know makes the yield for the watchers that that you know uh that much lesser um uppercase is watchers lowercase is listeners no uppercase watchers is um them just being pissed off so because green was in there um and ruining their feed that was one reason there is another reason why it was in caps lock and there's another person or another thing that is ruining their feed and we will touch on that in just a moment a vacant stare for wandering eyes so there you go so pause on pause we paralyze a vacant stare for wandering eyes is the recognition that the watchers would could tell what green would do uh, green was doing again they were pissed off about it so they used the, the the power that they had they would love to remove green from the games if they could but they've realized in the past that they can't do that tasking a player aka character martin in last life um to try and get rid of green sooner to maybe salvage the rest of their meal for the rest of the season also doesn't work 
So instead, they used their power, and the most they could do to affect Grian was to still have him be physically present in the world, but not spiritually present in the world, or at least not fully. Like, they basically managed to paralyze Grian and make him completely still, and he could still witness and absorb everything that was going on, um, but they left him in an AFK state, which made him vulnerable to getting killed easily, as well as not allowing him to bring that fun and joy to the series. But actually, that kind of ended up working against them. Um... So that was kind of my my thought process with that is that uh, it was the other watchers trying their best to get rid of Green and thwart his efforts, and that's the reason he was AFK for a session. Obviously, real life, take the hat off. Green was very sick, um, but in in terms of storytelling, I knew already that I had to formulate a, an idea or a sense of direction for why that happens. Um, Paneri, call the first to fall. Canary Call the First to Fall, of course, is, um, you know, uh, Timmy dying first. Uh, the Canary Curse is something that I wasn't aware of. Like, we all knew Timmy died first, but I didn't know people had a name for it. So as soon as people told me about that, bam, straight into the lore. Love it. It rhymes nicely. So, um, yeah, Timmy being the first to die every time is thrown in. Forever caged in different walls. And obviously this is a Canary Bird typically used in mining to uh detect noxious gases usually at the cost of its own life to help save the others or at least be a warning of death to come for all um and the whole being caged in different walls i really specifically use the word caged because the canary bird would be inside of a little cage on a mine cart somewhere um but also being caged in different walls was an acknowledgement that these death games are happening again and again and again and again um to do that was it intentional that this can be read as indifferent walls? Yeah, yeah, because they're totally impartial about things. It's it's indifferent walls, but indifferent walls as well is also just, it's just the sheer, like, a lack of empathy or lack of anything from the Watchers um, for the well-being of the players. Echoes ring for brief exchange. Okay disruptions by the ones estranged mm -hmm. tread careful sound for if we met our gaze would bring untimely death okay chat that last passage what what do you echoes ring for brief exchange um uh disruptions by the ones estranged tread careful sound for if we met our gaze would bring untimely death death spelled d-e-a-f what do we think what, what I, I would love to know your guys uh interpretations of that and, and what you think it is now i'm, I'm going to tell you so don't worry so yeah this does read this 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 does acknowledge lizzie and jem yeah i'm pretty much everybody's saying it yeah it's they are directly addressing the listeners. So uh, just a quick recap for those of you that aren't familiar with the Watcher listener law. Uh, all the way back in EVO, there was some entities called the Watchers. They were basically a personification or an embodiment of the viewers. And it was a vehicle that Green wanted to use as a means of having the viewers' thoughts um, brought into the world, as well as a vehicle for him to leave the series. Um, and then when Green left the series um we wanted to change spawn location and go to different places so we decided to introduce the idea of the listeners which were like a rivaling body and entity um i'm not going to say how many or how little of them there are um i won't go too deep into watch listener stuff but basically they tried to help the players flee uh the watchers grasp and they were unsuccessful and basically the watchers as a punishment for a lot of the evo players put them into these death games and i'm sure in the story in the canon of it the players that you don't see here are in different death games with different creators elsewhere um and it's not just evo cast members it's it's basically the watchers have a dominion over all minecraft realms and existences and they can pull people in from different places in order to do these death games um but they're particularly angry at the the evo crew for trying to flee for trying to get away from things so in previous seasons it has been nothing but watchers 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 messing with martin presenting themselves as the shadow dropping that veil at the end of last life to 
kind of hint already being like you're more of a listener he was only ever meant to watch kind of slowly drip feeding in the listener situation um and basically now it's a much more direct communication because in this series for the first time the listeners have been able to temporarily disrupt the um the, the listeners have actually been able to temporarily disrupt the games so i i wrote i wrote this out on a on a google doc so what i what i wrote down here was green has been able to act independently from the other watchers for some time they've tried in world assassination to shorten his time um for fear of him revealing the reality of the situation or simply spoiling the feed and making things too fun but that didn't work um this season they could interrupt his channeling and paralyze his avatar um forcing him to only watch a, a claustrophobic and frustrating tomb to be encased in and then i've put the body swaps of both lizzie and uh, sorry of both uh, pearl and cleo um were just a strange coincidence that they happened um in the same time period um so basically lizzie was tagged in because pearl hadn't quite fully recovered from the events of double life so you know, like i said before about the watchers overindulging and feasting too much on the negative feelings and things like that of the players it seems as though this time around the watchers didn't leave quite enough recovery time between double life and limited life to send her back in so basically pearl's aura um was already still fractured and wasn't quite whole before the beginning of limited life which meant as the series was going on um there was lots of echoes of the previous season because obviously the last season ended with her witnessing a suicide just before the next season uh before that season ended the loss of tilly and normally the players don't hold on to those feelings and those wants and needs from the previous seasons because things are eaten by the watchers and then each player goes into the next death match with a uh, neutral feeling about everything they have those memories but they don't hold on to those negative emotions or that sadness and i think with pearl they kind of messed up with that which is why pearl can come into me saying have you got tilly this that and the other so that moment that i showed then pearl tilly's ashes really fucking hurt and made uh pearl go on a bit of a of a, of a downward slope i guess and in recognition of that it is the first time that the listeners were able to step in and actually do a a temporary switch of sorts to basically lighten the load on Pearl's soul and actually have Lizzie be the embodiment of it because Lizzie wasn't around for the entirety of Double Life because the Watchers didn't deem Lizzie ready after Last Life but Lizzie had enough in the tank to see out either the rest of the season as intended or to just um or to at least sub in for uh, an episode um you didn't even unalive Tilly that was beat up as an impulse no but it's just the fact that Pearl was still holding on to the the hope of an old an old companion an old pet and stuff like that that was there um so literally what i put here is i put it was more taxing than usual um sure uh, uh pearl is a top tier player and reaches the end consistently but the trauma she experienced was a new level of fucked <laughs> it's, it's the exact wordings that i put in the uh in my document um it explains why she's been somewhat uncharacteristic this season reeling on the loss of tilly begging for her back and then lashing out when she can't return to those times um and then i guess the thing that i need some clarity from you guys on if you can give me some insight is other than joel recognizing lizzie for being lizzie and i think that was just a brief oh hi lizzie and then carried on with their day as is was there anybody else who ever audibly acknowledged that pearl and cleo were not themselves Oh, of course, yeah. Gem and Lizzie recognised each other, yeah. Because they were in the same boat. Joel kept doing it. Okay, cool. Because basically, what, what I was thinking in my head was that... Um, the, the, the initial narrative thread I was going to go down before the listeners had more of an influence this season was that... The Watchers had simply overindulged. They swapped in uh, Jem and Lizzie. And that was basically just to, to fill the gap whilst the other two recovered. And then they were basically swapped back in. But where I've leaned more into the listener story 
I, I, I like the idea that the listeners actually managed to make this disruption um, and actually swapped them in and said, don't speak to anybody else about this. But obviously, with Joel and Lizzie being soulmates, married in other SMPs, this, that, and the other, um, it made sense that Joel would be the only one who would recognize Lizzie um, upon interacting. It was just a demeanor. You know, it's not even seeing seeing the soul and things like that. It was Joel just immediately recognized that Lizzie was Lizzie, even if it wasn't in the same vessel um so, maybe, so let, let's commit it to the canon in that way then so if there wasn't too much recognition that people weren't who they were presenting as i like the idea that joel will always recognize lizzie no matter what no matter where no matter when um and that basically jem and lizzie recognized each other because they'd had very minimal discussion with the listeners before going in and were told to keep that on the dl keep it on the down low because the other thing that I was going to do was if the Watchers were the ones that did the swap for the Souls, then um, I was going to say that they were basically being blackmailed. So the reason they wouldn't say anything is because they would be blackmailed uh, and basically told that, you know, your loved ones will suffer a worse fate than, you know, this. But I like it. I like I like the idea that the listeners did the swap for the preservation of Cleo and Pearl's Souls. Um, and Jem and Lizzie were sworn to secrecy, but Joel recognizes Lizzie because soulmates so there you go so i like that i like let, let's commit that to the canon let's let's do it that way um so that's that uh what else is in this little poem Canary call the first too wholesome for this law no it's nice to have that it's nice to have things that can transcend the darkness of it all and, and the light if you will um could actually shine through at times forever caged in different walls so the listeners switched them out yeah so basically the the listeners used the very little foothold that they have in the in the watchers realm in the death game realm to actually do a temporary substitution and it takes a lot of concentration and channeling in order to do that um Echoes to to swap them in for brief exchange so that's what that means echoes ring for brief exchange my intention there was that the listeners you hear an echo and an echo is a temporary ripple a temporary thing um ring for brief so that's that's what that line basically means um disruptions by the one and then disruptions strange. by the ones estranged is a recognition that and i've never said this before but it's a recognition that the listeners are of the same I guess, uh, like race or, you know, type of existence as the Watchers. <clears throat> so the Watchers and the listeners are exactly the same. It's just that they have, yeah, they're, they're the same type of being. Um, but they have, you know, much like Green joined the Watchers, decided, nah, I don't actually like what the Watchers are doing. Um, the listeners are the same again. And, you know, the, the very old poem from the listeners was, um, you know, what was it? There are some who watch. We are those who listen and we do not agree with their most recent decision. That was one of the very first things that the listeners ever said to me and Timmy. Um, and basically, I won't say what the name of the beings is or how expansive that is. But yeah, the listeners have uh, stepped away and that's why they're estranged is because there's a difference they're not seeing eye to eye um so disruptions by the ones estranged is this this is why all of this is in all caps is because they've gone you fucking put different people in our bodies that's really fucking with our dinner you know what i mean um and that's why they're so angry about this whole thing and then that's why it's then followed up by a by a threat of if we met our gaze because they're the watchers so they gaze with their eyes um would bring untimely death so death obviously sounding nice on the 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 pun of we're gonna kill you if you keep step fucking with our stuff um but also death because for a listener to not be able to hear anymore is the equivalent of death um or at least symbolically so it's it's, it's a double play on the on the pun of the word death So I really enjoyed that. Um, so is Martin a listener? Uh, no. No. None of, none of the Evo players um, that tried to flee 
um or any of the characters in the story are uh listeners or watchers only um only Grian has become a watcher but aside from that everybody else is as we'll see in the finale law um they are still in the process of trying to flee they haven't ascended to a same in, into the same plane that Grian has with the watchers um so yeah there you go i don't mind people drawing um this doesn't stop me from making AUs, God bless. Yeah, that's the thing. Me saying that nobody is a listener, don't let that ruin you making art and making offshoot stories and stuff like that. Like I said, all of this watcher listener stuff is just my uh, alternate universe to the very small watcher character that Green created for his transition out of the series. But go nuts, honestly. I love seeing all the animatics where uh, and fan arts where people put like, you know, the ears and the eyes and the different colorings for things like that. Um... No one is a listener yet. Yeah. I mean, who's to say? I mean, the Watchers were able to bring somebody into the fold. Maybe at some point, one of these players um, would be able to be, would be able to leave. Um, it would be very difficult for them to. Because the reason it was easy for Green to become a Watcher is because it was kind of his intent and it was something they wanted to do. Like, the Watchers kind of pulled him out and did it for themselves. Um, but where these players in the life series and the people that tried to flee from evo are under such scrutiny and such a close watch from the watchers it's very hard for the listeners to really make a dent there and do things like that um so yeah so that's that um i don't think there's any more lore is there until uh until the finale then uh da -da 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 -da. let's go through what about speakers honestly speakers is something that i joked about so far um and i don't know whether i will or won't explore that like it's a bit of a joke at the minute you know the whole uh hear no evil speak no evil see no evil i like the idea of it and it does also lend itself with the whole speak and listen um or sorry watch and listen it does lend itself nicely to maybe an expansive thing where you know you can have them be of all the senses so like you said the smellers and stuff like that but maybe that just sounds a little bit too comical um you know touch taste sight sound smell i just don't know whether i want to go down that route just yet so at the minute watcher listeners <clears throat> are the only real ones i like the idea of speakers but i don't know how they would be represented or what they're taking the story is they don't currently exist at least in my <laughs> in my in my story um and then we get through to the finale. So, uh, is there anything else in my doc that I've not mentioned yet? Mm. Oh, yeah. Sorry, just to quickly touch on this. So, um, the Watchers obviously recognized what was going on um, with the listeners doing the soul swaps. Um, and it was mutually beneficial for both the Watchers and the listeners um, to give the memories uh as first-hand experiences to um cleo and pearl upon their return to their bodies so to them they are none the wiser that anything was different the week before if that makes sense because if they came back and was suddenly like oh my fucking god my soul got swapped out and then like this happened and that happened basically it's been implanted in their minds the impression of everything that happened as um just as they lived it you know what i mean almost a bit like green and seeing everything through the eyes it's they were basically given the the memories and the emotions um from what Jem and uh lizzie experienced back to their back to their vessels as canon basically amnesia cold yes well not i guess not amnesia cold because they they knew what had happened because they, they weren't i mean i mean i guess actually let me double check because i'm pretty sure that they acknowledged the stuff that happened there was the joke about amnesia cold in the community but i don't know whether that is something that pearl and cleo did so wait sorry when you say yes yep they did is it they acknowledged it oh cleo oh so they have acknowledged it they've called it that so have they basically acknowledged that they don't remember what happened in the past week is that what it is if so we can we can switch lanes with the law and i can i can make sure it fits the series that it's vague okay okay 
well let's do that then let's 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 swap out the whole they remember everything and we'll we'll whack amnesia cold in there i'm totally cool with that that doesn't that doesn't really change anything on my end honestly um that's cool they said they have vivid memories yeah so they'll, they'll have flickers of what happened yeah i like that let's do that then let's let's like it's like i try to not make the law you know affect anybody else but i don't mind their behaviors affecting the law that i write jem called it amnesia cold first as explains why she was different wait 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 so i'm, I'm i think i might be misunderstanding is it they were calling it amnesia cold during the week that they swapped out or was it the week they got back they were saying they couldn't remember what had happened both during both during and after okay in which case then let's just keep it as they remember bits and pieces and basically my thinking with that is that the listeners and the watchers um the listeners uh, the watchers would like it to be vague and muddy so that the uh the players don't become aware of what the reality of their situation is and then for the listeners it's good for them to um keep the memories with uh the vessels because then um there isn't that kind of like oh fuck i blacked out for a week what happened like so it, it puts less strain on their souls so that that works yeah so yeah that's fine in 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 my little watcher listener law um will make amnesia cold full out cannon that that is totally fine that that works that works really nicely um so that's cool so we got that um uh, uh, uh. and then i guess we we're on to the finale now aren't we What's the law reason for Cleo being out? What do you mean the law reason for Cleo being out? Oh, sorry. Oh, so you mean, sorry, the reason that Cleo had to be swapped out. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Uh, 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 uh. Where was it? Where was it? I think I did write this down. Hold on, wait. And let me, let me just double check what I've written here and does actually match up. So the reason that I think I put down Cleo as uh where was it where was it where was it yeah that's that one there sorry i just need to scan through three three pages yep and yep and yeah okay cool so um the reason that i uh canonically like you know law wise the reason that cleo was swapped out is because pearl obviously experienced a lot of trauma at the end of the series even though pearl is a consistent top end player a late you know a late finisher um that was why pearl was under a lot of strain and had the sort of the fragmented soul and then for cleo finishing basically second place in the final minutes of the entire series and being hunted down by that pack of wolves um that was a new experience for cleo that was more than cleo has ever experienced so cleo has always finished towards the bottom of the board or in the lower half or around the middle but never has finished the series at the top top end so it was new additional stress that she hadn't encountered before which is why it had taken such a toll on her and why when she came into um into limited life um but bad math traumatized her yeah <laughs> yeah she was dragged to the top end by you i mean story wise yeah we can say that but it was a, it was unfamiliar ground for cleo to be around for that long and to witness that much destruction um so that was basically the reason in, in my little document all i did a second ago was I just checked her positionings for third last and double life um but that was the reason that i'd written down but i just wanted to check where her positions were so yeah pearl's always been top end massive trauma at the end of a double life and then cleo finished higher than she ever has done had a really gruesome death and it was just all a bit too much to recover in time for the next games uh basically so yeah so there you go um so the next thing we've got then i guess is the finale of the season so um let's just go to here real quick um and play this out Ooh. I don't know what I'm looking at here. Oh, this track. Let's now that we're here, let's let's find out what that track is called. Um, because somebody was asking for that on socials. A lot of people wanted that track for um for like animatics and stuff. Uh where is it? Limited eight. There it is. It was such a good track, yeah. It was it was nice. 
uh where is it here it is the track is called and the part of the reason that i chose this track is I'd, I'd had that track for a while i'd had it for the whole season um but i wanted it because where, it, where it's like a real like clang and a tick it really feels like some kind of like counter um and the original idea was that that 10 to 1 countdown that i had um happen um here originally i wanted to do a 10 to 1 countdown here leading up to the to the betrayal but it just didn't work it didn't work but i kept the visual vignette and there's a law reason now for that which we'll talk about in just a second um but this one here is called disturbing atmosphere third floor um as in floor f-l-a-w let me see if it's on youtube disturbing atmosphere third floor Yeah, there it is. Um, there's the link if anybody wants it. Accurate description. Yeah, too right. Um, so, yeah, there we go. Okay. So, uh, was there a poem during this episode? Or was it just, it was all at the, all at the tail end of the series? I think it was. I, mean, I, don't think, I think it was just at the end. Keep the song on for the stream. Uh, I will do. I'll, I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll pause it for now just because we're going to watch this for a moment and go through it. I want to get in range. I don't understand why you're gaming so hard, bro. I'm not uh, trying to game so hard. Uh, it's just... <laughs> oh. Okay. Check it out. Here's what's going to happen. Okay. Do it. Do it, Martin. Do what? Do it's it. eight minutes. Oh, eight minutes. Take it. Yeah. Take it. Take it and then you take Scott down. It's like a calm How heartbeat. How much you got? Yeah, um, and so in terms of the law, my thinking with it currently is that this kind of like vignette, this pulsing, is this built-up frustration that the watchers have got um, about the listeners messing with their games. They really don't like Scott because Scott refused to participate in the boogeyman mechanic and has won a few series on the trot now. Impulse was in a position where he was willingly giving up his life and almost had kind of found peace with the situation, which just basically they've got this lovely like ice cream sundae and Impulse doing this just squirts ketchup all over the top of it and completely ruins the feed for them. So basically this kind of like pulsing vibe is the watcher's frustrations kind of brewing um, and it's where they start to kind of creep in and go... You can swap out souls, listeners. That's great and all. You can you can tag in people inside of different bodies, but we want to make sure... On 212. How much you got? We want to make sure we get what we want here. We want uh, the finish that we want. Four, and also because this Four, is familiar eight. as well. <laughs> I basically took all of Envolve's time. Oh, man. Oh, my gosh. Why don't we all just die and then we go down to less than an hour each? Because, look, this is all too civil. It's all too you know, nicey-nicey and things like that. Um, and basically the thinking is, is that the reason for this betrayal is not only because it was already a thought, a deep embedded thought in um, in character Martin's kind of mindset, because he's always had since third life this lingering, I will kill who I need to, to win this thing. He has that emotive and that diversified um, kind of, you know, sense of loyalty. Um and I think basically, I think what I want to commit to canon, because I don't think it feels like too much of a stretch, is that this isn't necessarily the Watchers fully, um, it isn't the Watchers fully possessing Martin, but I think it's more, they are really driving in the negative feelings. Like, I don't know if anybody's read, uh, what's it called? The Final Empire, uh, the book in that, um, from the Mistborn series, but... I can't remember what the what metal it is they burn or what the ability is called, but there are people in that series that have the ability to um, heighten the wrong kinds of emotions in a person. They can either subdue the emotions or they can push them up um, and make them feel more riled up and more angry than they actually should be. And that's kind of what I I want to I think I want to commit that to canon is that that is what is going on here is the watchers wanted a show they wanted a final panic and a and a show of force and to really sort of put the cherry on the top of the Sunday rather than catch up and you can hear it in the tone of voice from impulse being like whoa 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 what's going on that is the stuff they feed on that is the stuff that they love it's literally the hundreds and thousands the sprinkles that make their make the dessert just delicious um. 
And I think it's that that sort of mentioning of delicious and things like that about time being delicious was almost like very slightly the watchers slipping in to mild possession towards the end um <laughs> impulse is good soup i like that um but that's basically what that pulsating was was the kind of the encroaching thoughts the 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 negative um yeah. now nah, i don't want to play this silly game stuff happening. i want to do it this way I wanna do it scott never even got a chance to speak but then this panic from impulse is exactly what they wanted oh, exactly whoa, this way whoa, whoa, it doesn't matter if you're what? a mean gill or a bad boy or a, a neighbor or a clocker you're all going down none of these niceties this is a death match for a reason and that kind of like reminder of like you do realize why you're here right like it's it's an acknowledgement that it can't always end civil oh it feels good time is delicious <laughs> thinking about it now i kind of wish that i began to distort the voice as those final few lines happened that would have been really cool like it would have been really cool to for the voice to slowly distort and go like time is delicious ha 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 crash out um but where i was so literally nose that like the grindstone to finish the series out i think there's enough difference in my voice where it does feel as though it's not quite me um respawn so we're all at full saturation but it would have been cooler if it went like you know this started to kind of go in Oh, that's true, yeah. Now, nah, I don't want to play this silly game. I want to do it this way. I want to do it exactly this way. It doesn't matter if you're a mean gill or a bad boy or a, a neighbor or a clocker. You're all going down. None of these niceties. This is a death match for a reason. Oh, it feels good. Time is delicious. <laughs> So there we go. That's what happened there. This clock really bugs me. So this clock here, I wish, because obviously what happened after this, like maybe like a minute later, not even, uh, I then got thunderstruck with slash kill twice and that was it, series over. Um, but I didn't have an opportunity to record this clock going from the time that I was on down to zero to give that sense of time passing annoyingly. Um, but I wanted to show it kind of going down a little bit. And then obviously... Yeah this 10 happens another thing that i would have loved to have done in this sequence if i had enough time was i wanted between each of the numbers being said was to have like you know um random little voice clips of prominent moments for character martin throughout the entirety of the life series so i wanted to be like you know my lord and like you know different betrayals and um different moments that make up character martin's whole journey so far so it would have been like 10 You've got to do it, Miladi, and stuff like that. Um, but I, I genuinely just ran out of time. We, me, Scott, and Impulse agreed to upload at 5 p.m. I felt bad asking them to delay any further. Um, so, yeah, that's basically what I would like to have done. Um, and also, the idea for the countdown was that I wanted to do it in the order that people died. So I wanted to have Timmy be first, which I'm pretty sure Timmy is first in the uh, in the countdown and then i wanted to introduce one voice at a time until eventually everyone the whole lobby is saying one at the end together but i wasn't able to get voice lines from everybody and also it did feel very empty with just timmy's voice i did try layering in you know um i tried layering in uh this voice going 10 and like going through it like that but it still wasn't quite enough just to have the listener uh, to have the watcher voice as well as um just timmy um so it felt better that it was like a group chant um and there wasn't really too much in the way of any logic for that it was i was really pressed for time um so all it was was i had originally i had the let me pull it up here so I originally had all the listeners here. So the listener was, uh, sorry, the watcher. Why do I keep saying listener? I had the watcher voice, always the most prominent one here. And then everybody else's were just sort of panned to left and right here. Um, and then what I ended up doing was I ended up pulling up different people's voices to become the central channel. So it's 10. Timmy. Nine. Clear Nine. Pearl. And then I think I had green as eight. Oh, play. Oh, it's been a bit funny. Eight. Yeah. Seven. That's impulse. Six. Scott. And also I put Scott's in for six just because it's funny because it always sounds like he's saying sex. So that would just make me giggle in editing because I'm being stupid. Um, <laughs> five. Uh, Etho for five. And then... <laughs> um, there wasn't any lead voice for four. After that point, it, it all got a bit messy. 
because you can just see how scrambled for time i was and i, I think even all the fives aren't or all the sixes aren't quite properly lined up and stuff um but that was that so that that's how that came about um but yeah in an ideal world it would have been introduction of each person's voice as they died obviously we have more than 10 players so we would have had two people coming at once and stuff like that um, but it ended up just being every so often there's a different dominant voice and everybody else is panned in the left and the right ear to go from there um so that was that for the countdown and then after all of that we then get to um, me running out of time just to show that it didn't just pause I, I like the idea that I was left to, because obviously you don't see it on camera, so there wasn't just slash kill this time around. I like the idea that Mark, character Martin was just left in this hollow world waiting for everything to just end. He knew what time he had left. He could feel it, you know, draining from him. And I kind of like the idea, actually. I know this is really angsty, but I love the idea um, that basically... He went and finished off the sand timer, manually moved all the sand into the bottom of the timer, and then literally as he does the final one, covers the glass over, he just kind of falls backwards, splash into the water, and in the course of the next couple of hours that pass, he gets washed up onto the shore to settle still and to mold into the sands. And then his body in that realm just kind of, you know, rots and disappears. But I like the idea that he finishes his, finishes his project splash washes up on the shore and uh that's how the time reaches zero um so yeah that's what i imagine happened leading up to this moment so time hit zero he falls wash up game's done no bodies left only mine there rotting and uh that was that I'm actually going to put that in my document, actually. Um, where was it? Uh, died when timer hit zero. Just after moving all red sand into the bottom of the hourglass. And fell into the waters to be washed up on the shore. To settle still and mold slash rot. There we go um so there you go so there's that bit and then we got this bit by the way that sound is so fucking good that that sound effect that comes in let me play you it just by itself because it's so so i don't know powerful look at the waveform for it that is a big like whoa right there Almost makes your ears like vibrate and ring a little bit. It was perfect. Oh yeah, that's a, that'd be that'd be a fun thing to look at actually. So this is how many episodes this? So the visuals, if you're intrigued, is I took Limited Life episode five, Double Life episode four, uh, the finale of Last Life, and episode eight of Third Life as the sped up uh, reversed visuals for the um for the end of this where's the where's where's that sequence gone where is it uh here it is um but yeah let's have a look through some of these visuals if i get rid of the oh no i guess because it's sped up i have to look at it in this timeline don't i let's have a look uh da -da 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 -da. So what sort of things can you see here? Oh, is that me landing on the glass? That's actually really funny if that's the case. Oh, it is, yeah, because look, you can see skids there. That's really funny because I didn't really make... I, I think there was... I think I just wanted to choose episodes of prominence, but I didn't realize that that was... That's one of the very first frames you see on that part of that episode. That's funny. So you can see, like, the skids bit. Skids turning red. Me following Timmy on the bridge and everything like that. You get a nice, like, shot of, like... Uh, scar in there as well that's quite nice oh oh tell you what that's actually scar's moment turning red god there's some really good moments in this there's some really good moments that it just happens to have chosen from the visuals um tell you what i'm gonna mute that track just because the little uh, 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 is annoying in fact i'll solo uh i'll be fine 
In fact, I can just turn that down, can't I? Um, so I'm just looking through it and just seeing what visuals we've got. Let me zoom out a bit. So yes, yeah, so you got that episode. What's that? That's me, Scott, and Cleo having a chin wag. That's still limited life. Still, oh no, there, there we go. So now we're into. Oh look, this even got the um. <laughs> that's the 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 Ren double life um pool party. It's got the pool party in there. Uh, what else we got? Oh, that's a god. That's a really good frame for it to hold on. The um the the warden death. Yeah. What's that bit? Oh, that's uh, the relationship, Etho and Joel. I mean, I don't know how badly YouTube will have hooked this box. <laughs> um, I don't know how badly this will have crunched down on YouTube. Oh, look, we've even got the, the catch in the warden. Because that was obviously the episode which was called, like, How to Catch Your Pet Warden. Oh, interesting. So it actually has the the end narrative from Last Life there. That whole conversation. It has a few frames from that. Then you've got that whole finale. You've even got like, the meeting of the, the the shadow group beneath the surface, I think that is. Oh, you've got Pearl's um you've got Pearl's assassination attempt with the disco room. The the boogie in the boogie room. You've got a bunch of us out in the courtyard. This is honestly just cool, just kind of looking through and seeing what's there. What's this one? Oh god, this, this is within within dog warts now. That's pretty fast. So yeah, so we're inside a dog warts. You've got skids there. Um yeah, this is nuts. And then you got like look, us downstairs with our trading hall. Me with Ren. Oh, there you go. You look, you got the red winter moment. You get a nice frame of that. You get a frame of me with the axe. Oh, you get. Oh no, you get a frame of me putting down the cobweb. You actually get a frame of me killing him or no? No, I don't think you do. But you get some some moments there like that, which is interesting. Oh, you you get you get a still. Oh, is that is that the last frame? The last frame is him with an axe in his hand looking at me. Oh, there's even the, the clip from the uh from the, the Twitch rivals. This is all an accident, all these cool frames. This is just um, you know, whatever it decided to pull together. Um so that's pretty cool. I love that for us. Um okay, so we got that. Then we have the uh the actual animatic. So let's uh let's watch this together first. I know the series is spontaneous, but was your birthday party failing planned or not? Um, no, it wasn't planned. No, that, that was just... I didn't expect anybody to find things. There are some who watch. We are those who listen. Not yet free, still you flee from a weighted decision. Okay, so let's break it down a little bit for you. So, um, there are some who watch. We are those who listen. This is making it very clear that um this is the listeners speaking right now character martin here isn't necessarily um responsive to this i don't think he even hears it it's more this is semi addressing the audience or more just kind of speaking generally in into the into the the, the nothingness into the void um but it's showing that the the listeners have a presence or at least part of a presence in where the players are being held between each of the death games they've managed to kind of break through that barrier break through that threshold Watch. we are those who listen also cherry's art is incredible i've already seen people hyping cherry up in chat very much deserved not yet free will martin carry these negative feelings into the next season uh probably not no it, everything will still continue as always until we are free the cycle continues it's the watchers feed the negative emotions are gone but the memories retain so we know how to read people, but we don't feel any disdain towards them. Although, having said that, Tango Tango was holding on to those things. So I don't know, maybe if we, you know, maybe people can have fun with the idea that the Watchers are just like kind of scrambling and feasting and throwing them back in as quickly as they can. And they keep missing little bits. You know what I mean? Like Tango's rage holds on a little bit and things like that. That's kind of a fun idea. I'm not going to commit it to canon, but that's a fun little avenue to think about. Still you flee from a weighted decision so this whole fleeing from a weighted decision i've seen people talking about this a lot on socials and probably going more into depth about it than it actually is um 
but it's basically the recognition that they were trying to run away from the watchers in evo that's that's what i was kind of doing there and also partly the running away from the betrayal of having just killed scott and stuff like that as well um in each piece like uh i'm having another insanity moment can awaited mean awaited i mean i guess it could it wasn't intentional the other one you said was yeah was intentional but i really like the idea of a weighted decision that's pretty cool um here we go weighted decision in each piece lies a piece that makes up the whole woven the fragments that make up a soul so that those last few lines i want to know what you guys think it means if anybody has any thoughts and feelings on it you know the one thing that i'm pissed off at myself about is that it's 100 percent my fault is when it transitions from the falling into uh that frame there it is supposed to have the uh, the fragments um but it didn't and that, that was just my bad what's the song this song is a custom song this song was made by sparkles So there you go. Yeah, so that, that song uh, that plays in there, um, it doesn't even have a name. I feel like we should give it some kind of like angsty name, you know what I mean? But uh, it genuinely doesn't have a name. I'll show you I'll show you the name of it in uh, <laughs> in Dropbox. Where is it? Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I'm pretty sure it's just called, at the minute it's called like Martin Debut Brackets 2 <laughs> dot wave. <laughs> Something really lame like that. <laughs> Call it Fragment Protected. Uh, no, no, because that, that wouldn't work. That wouldn't work. Uh, here we go. Where is it? File request. Uh, it is currently called. Oh, it, it, to be fair, it's called Martin Score. Um, but that's obviously just because it's a score. Um, so yeah. So talk me through it, chat. What are your thoughts on on this bit here? I'm just intrigued to see what you think. Do the diamond patterns on Martin in the art have significance? Uh, or were they just the way the fracture patterns were drawn? Um, somewhat, somewhat. There's a, there's a, there's a relevance to the shape of them, but it's not the be all and end all of everything. Um, it, it's not it's not fully it's not fully that. I think your character is split or fractured across multiple universes, and the fragments are being destroyed slash need to be reconnected, which. If the fragment that is in the live series has been protected, I'm wondering if you'll be in the next season. Mm, no, not quite that. Uh, so a fragment is a part of your soul, somehow related to the VTuber. Uh, racket, shut up. <laughs> and you've somehow damaged or lost some, and you got one back for winning. So, yeah, you're on the right track there. So... I, th I think uh oh i'm trying to think how to word this now this is the one part that i've not actually written down properly just yet i've seen a lot of people on tumblr and uh twitter and stuff like that saying that oh the fragments are loot shards that's not quite right it's in it's in the right ballpark but it's it's not just one-to-one -one. it's not you know a fragment here is not a, a loot shard in the vtuber stuff so i will say that that's not it's not a one-to-one -one, uh connection between the two um and in terms of because what what was the comment again where was it um so you've somehow dam damaged or lost some and you got what one back for winning so that that is partly correct so so far um that there that there and that there they are life series losses those are fragments that have been lost and um we're not sure whether those fragments can be repaired um 
So each time that uh, character Martin has, in, has incurred a loss, uh, a pretty large fragment has been lost from his soul slash body. It's a visualization of it, um, which is why, because of the win, um, this here was able to happen. And the entity that does that, even though it doesn't do, like, what it is, is character Martin does, like, 95% of the work. This comes in and does, like, the final 5%, just to make sure that the protection of said fragment um, actually works. And this is a listener. These are the listeners. So it's not it's not the touches no so they they are the listeners so this realm that character martin is falling and floating through is just kind of like this kind of unexplained void i don't i don't know if i've mentioned this before have i mentioned before that the reason that they are left in suspension and they're not just floating static but they're constantly falling is because um, one of the only, if not the only, fear that humans are born with, the only instinctive fear that we have, is falling. So to have them continually falling allows that during the, the, the recovery period between each of the death games, allows the, um, the watchers to just siphon off a teensy bit of negative emotion. That, that, that kind of unconscious twitching of the muscles and that kind of instinctive fear is what the is what the watchers are feeding on between um the life games um and yeah and basically the, the the this here is the listeners and in this instance they are able to help martin character martin protect that fragment due to the victory and also through their own intervention uh, or disruption they were able to actually protect that fragment so that is a part of martin which is protected but it doesn't necessarily mean it's safe forever um listeners are reformed watchers i wouldn't say reformed but they've certainly like i mentioned earlier on they've become estranged because they've begun to have a differing of opinion um they have a much stronger one than say green does why is he ignoring the colors? <laughs> what do you mean the colors? What 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 do you want to know about the colors? So is character Martin fragmented? I mean, so um, that kind of explains. Uh, where is it? Uh, here it is. Here we go. Lies a piece. So in each piece lies a piece that makes up that makes up the, the whole. whole. It's basically talking uh, there about. You know, Martin, at the, at the end of it, when he finished doing the sand timer and was readily awaiting death, there was a there was a sense of peace. Um, Woven. And basically the fragment was kind of, you know, without realizing the fragment was the piece that he found, was the fragment of his actual, you know, uh, soul the that he found. And it says, Woven the fragments that make, that make up a soul. So basically that's a recognition that you know he's lost three times he's lost these massive fragments there are others across his body there are lots of smaller fragments for from smaller tit for tats that the listeners and the watchers have been having it's just that these life series are quite big significant impactful moments that happen um so yeah and basically i like to think that the one that's on the hand um is kind of the most prominent one because that's the one that he wield, wields his blade with and things like that. Like, I guess you could have, if we had, if we'd have cured a different piece, we could have been like, oh, this one was because he was the hand of the king and blah, 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 blah. Um, <clears throat> or maybe it's just quite nice that he was the unguided hand, yet that was the fragment that he was able to have, you know, uh, remedied and cured and stuff like that. Um, that's, that's quite a fun idea as well. I don't want to get too much into the details of which fragment means what, but the the one thing I will say is that, you know, there, there, and there, um, and I'm pretty sure there's a third one as well. Maybe that one's out of frame, out of sight. Yeah, there's there's another one. So yeah, sorry, the one the one on the hand is for the is for limited life. 
Um, and then this one here is for uh, Double Life. Um, just because that one is the closest to the heart and it's about, you know, being tied to somebody else's heart and soul. Um, so that was Double Life. Um, and then you've got... Um, uh, I don't know what that one would be. Would that one be Third or Last Life? I reckon that would potentially be Third Life. I like the idea of that being placed there because that was a tear shed when uh, Ren fell because that was sort of the moment that kind of broke character Martin and made him more selfish moving forwards. Um, and then, yeah, and then there's there's another one which is out of sight currently, but it is of the same size as these, as these diamonds. These sort of like cracks that come from outside of it, they're just kind of like, just kind of like echoes out. Um, but yeah, so yeah, third life, double life limited life is sorry limited life there and then uh last life um is is beneath the clothing so yeah so that's that I, I think that's everything so fragment protected that part of martin's soul is secure and then yeah uh the purple you said you liked and you would never change the fanon colors yeah so i guess the the fanon colors are a bit kind of like uh tend to be more sort of like yellows and greens don't they for the listeners um i don't think you need to worry too much about the colorings of you know the characters coming in here i think this is more they come into this area similar to um let me find the other shot um where is it Where is it? Where is it? Um, yeah, like similar to this, it's they come in almost as like as a as a pure white, like a pure light, and it is the it's it's the I guess like the purple because this is a watcher's domain, kind of just like tints and taints the listeners as they come in, but it's not their their color isn't purple if that makes sense. Yeah, the void. Yeah, the void in the surrounding area makes everything purple um that's what it is so they're coming in as a pure pure bright white light um so yeah so they, this doesn't this doesn't dissuade any of the color choices for listeners that people have already established um so yeah i think i think that's everything so there's this constant back and forth there's this constant battle this constant strain and tug of war between the listeners and the watchers um, the watchers are basically just trying to feed on character Martin. The listeners are trying to free and liberate him. Um, and then the fragments are really prominent battles between the two sides, as well as whatever character Martin goes through. Um, and those fragments once lost, I don't know currently whether they can be replenished or not. Um, and basically that's where it kind of that, that that's kind of where everything kind of plays out from um so how does character martin feel about green or does he not mind him the thing is right so this is the thing i probably should clarify is character martin doesn't know this is all going on when he's in the void here completely unconscious even when you know the listeners come and help uh you know uh like protect a fragment and stuff he has no idea and in world there is no point where character Martin knows that character Grian is actually a watcher who has inserted themselves into the game. Um, there's no there's no acknowledgement of that. The only time character Martin has ever gotten a, a hint at the truth or a glimpse at the truth, but obviously couldn't comprehend it, was the conversation at the end of Last Life where they kind of dropped the veil for a moment and spoke directly to him and they made hints at stuff, but they were, they were talking in riddles and rhymes that he had no no knowledge of. um so yeah so Grian knows about the watchers yeah so the idea is that Grian became a watcher from evo um and basically from there uh he decided he didn't like what the watchers were doing so basically what we decided the last time we spoke about this is that the watchers um are feeding on the negative emotions between each death game um and that is something new that they've been doing Grian obviously having been friends with a lot of the characters a lot of the players previously 
didn't like that this was the thing that was going on so green kind of maintained his i guess to, guess to be honest green is just as estranged as uh the listeners are but the listeners have made a real thing of becoming like a separate clan or a separate entity whereas green i think is just being given watchers uh you know watcher abilities i won't say the name of what the beings are as a whole but um green has been graced with those abilities but is almost like a bit of a, a solo rogue agent at the minute um and i don't know whether green is even aware of the listeners at this point i think at the moment it's probably quite a solitary and main character story for green where he is constantly being like you know harassed and hunted by the watchers and he's trying to ruin their plans but he he hasn't become a customer or attuned to these new powers that he has yet so he doesn't really know how to get everybody out of the games which is why he just actively participates <clears throat> to make everything more fun uh to try and lessen their suffering um i think it's kind of the vibe so nobody in world knows what's going on uh with the other players do the listeners dislike Grian? i don't think so i don't think the the listeners have really paid Grian too much mind i think they just see him as like you know what it mean like in like um, among us you have like third boogie or second boogie uh or sorry a third imposter or second imposter i think it's that kind of thing i think it's at the moment they're seeing anytime that Grian is drawing the watcher's attention away from what they're trying to do they get to creep in and I think in this season, I think is maybe why uh, the listeners have had their biggest foothold and they've managed to make the most impact they ever have is because Grian was given so much more room to be chaotic and explosive and killing people with quad kill TNT kills and things like that, but making it all really fun and super exciting meant that the Watchers had their eyes full instead of hands full, more so than usual, um, is the way that I imagine it. <clears throat> can green eat negative emotions too he can so when green was initially brought on as a watcher um he was feeding on the positive emotions and things like that and occasionally maybe the negative because green probably saw it as a means of alleviating uh you know those feelings from the players um but as the watchers ramped up and realized that oh actually betrayal is pretty fucking tasty when the boogeyman mechanic was then added to try and emphasize that that's when green i think stepped away and was like mm, not sure about that guys <laughs> not sure about it um so yeah because green green's character in in my story at least ascended to become the same type of being as the watchers but he is newer to it all and he has um he doesn't have a full grasp of the capabilities and the powers of it all he hasn't he hasn't had the full sort of awakening if you will um and he hasn't met the council and things like that so there's a there's a lot of there's a lot of layers to that green green still new boy in uh in higher being realms now that character martin is protected the fragment will future life games be different for him um not really no i think when it comes to green's character i don't know if i if i want to progress his his stance on things or his capabilities on things too much um council yep oh, the council again we won't be we won't be delving into the council today sorry i thought i could just give you that little little offhand comment um but yeah, the, the, somebody was asking earlier on about the hierarchy among the Watchers and the Listeners and things like that. And it's the Watchers and the Listeners that we know of and are, you know, interfacing with. They're of a near identical level of, you know, power and importance among the beings that they are. Um, but that will be something explored in future, future lore drops and other things so yeah i like giving you a little bit to to feed on and the thing is is that i don't think anything really has to particularly change in how character martin's games will go from now on because the idea is that these beings are very very old and have been around for a very long time and we don't know as the audience whether there have been a bunch of different life series and games that have happened 
in between each of the life series, if that makes sense. Like, they could have just run third life a couple times and we had no idea. And then they bring in last life and they run that a couple times. Like, it, it could be done like that. Um, but yeah. It was a 50-50 poll between listener and watchers. I love that. That's really funny. So there you go. So I, I hope that everybody's got the answers they were seeking. It's sort of peeled back the, the onion a little bit on the story that's going on. Slight acknowledgement of the links to the VTuber lore. And uh, hopefully it gives an, a sort of an, an insight for the, the, the character decisions. And also how my betrayal wasn't a surprise or a last minute decision or whatever else. It was kind of laid before us. But has anybody got any remaining questions about it all? Green is a watcher. Uh, Scott is hated by the watchers. Martin's a pawn of the listeners. And the watchers, to be fair. I've done the, the watchers bidding many times. How do the entities feel about Pearl? Um, fairly indifferent. I, I, think, I think that she is definitely on the shit list. More so than the other players in the series. Because Pearl was one of the people that tried to flee from the Watcher's original Evo series. And they, they took that, like, to heart. Um, so, yeah. So, I think anybody who is an Evo gets a slightly rougher r ride. And they are uh, sort of distasted by the Watchers more so than other players. <clears throat> How is the fragment on the glove? So this isn't actually like they, they don't have to be on the skin. It's just about like they, they can be on the surface level as well, if that makes sense. So there are some that are hidden under the clothing. Some can be over. It's just it can be visualized in any way that you want. Basically, it, it doesn't matter too much. That one was just like a little a little doodle. We don't we don't need to give too much credence to it. Any law implications with Jimmy always being out first? Um, I think honestly at this point. That's just a, a fun coincidence. I mean, maybe the watchers, you know, <laughs> quite enjoy seeing that happen and the frustrations that Timmy must feel probably are a unique flavor for the watchers when they're devouring these negative emotions. Um, but I don't think they have a, a massive hand in doing it. Um, yeah, I don't want to say that there's any kind of intervention from the, the listeners, uh, sorry, the watchers causing that. What about the theory that Green and Jim uh, were pushed off by the Watchers? Nah, I'm not, I'm not, I don't know if I feel that so much. Are the Watchers particularly fond of any of the members? Uh, I mean, they're fond of me only because I seem to do their bidding and I'm a bit more uh, willing to do so. I would imagine they're pretty, I would imagine they would have a pretty uh, nice uh, hint towards Skiz and Joel. Because again, they lean into the more chaotic bloodlusty side of things um so i you know it's sort of like a, a knee-jerk you know response I, I reckon skiz and joel would be their would would be some of their favored skiz was so wholesome this season yeah but as soon as skiz became unhinged like skiz had a slight change of heart this season but generally <clears throat> he's a real wild card I like the idea that the fragment from Last Life is the biggest one because uh, they lost... Oh, jeez, let me scroll up. Because uh, they lost the most lives. Limited life I count as one life as in the center of the shoulder on the back because he kept a lot of secrets, hides it behind him. Hmm. Yeah, I guess actually, question. Where would you place the Last Life uh, fragment, everyone? Which part of the body? The shoulder or the back between the shoulder blades. The shoulder. The ass. I like that. Wow, a lot of people saying back center, shoulder blades. I like that. Do you want to just commit that to canon chat? Everybody say I if you agree. But EYE because obviously it's watches. So why not? Everybody say I. Nice. <laughs> cool, there you go. We've done it. So in this instance, it's beneath the beneath the clothing, obviously. 
But yeah, there's, there's a fragment for last life. Right between the shoulder blades, right at the back. And there are smaller ones uh, along the body. The thing with the smaller fragments, <clears throat> they are smaller smaller tug of wars. Because the thing is, is, is character Martin isn't always involved with the battle itself, if that makes sense. So um, he is unconscious, but there's... There's a layer to this where there's an unconscious fighting on character Martin's part to help these battles. But sometimes he is just completely involuntary to them. So those smaller battles with the smaller fragments, um, they will likely happen from the feet and work upwards. Um, so beneath the shoes, there is there is some there is some distortion on the uh, the, the feet that has happened from smaller transgressions. Wait, were the Moratin Scars fragments? Um, no, I probably wouldn't say that. I think that was more just a, a character trait. Have the Watchers' uh, opinions on Scott changed since he accepted the Boogie Man role in episode one, or do they still hate him? Nah, they still hate him. They hate his guts. Especially because Scott still frags out consistently, but does it with such reluctance. And it's like, you know, even even Impulse was like, why are you gaming so hard? And he's like, I'm not trying to. Like it's it, it's it's not a it's not a voluntary thing. It's very much just like acting. It's Scott Scott still holds a lot of his principles and he still is very trusting of, of others and doesn't hold any contempt. Even prior to them feeding on the emotions, Scott is always happy for Pearl to take the win or for me to take the win or whatever else it may be. Um so they, they don't get much from Scott. And that, I think that frustrates them. I'm certain you've seen the fact that people refer to the past winners as the... Oh, yeah, the Celestial stuff, yeah. Um, so far, there's been Mars, the Sea, and the Sword. Is there a title you like more than the others? Or is there one you think would be better? Um, I, I don't really know. I feel like I want to leave that one up to people to, to do. I don't think I need a title. Like, I guess, you know, Mars fits in with the planetary stuff. And then the comet is more in my, you know, the meteor is more in my character's nature. But I won't, I'm not, I'm not going to poo-poo any ideas or really put all my eggs in one basket for anything. I should just get this thing here, shouldn't I? And loop it. Where is it? Uh, where is it? I've got that animation somewhere. Is it there? Yeah, you can do that. Can I play it on loop? Oh, why is it in low quality? Hold on. Full quality, please. There we go. We can just leave that there as it is. Although it doesn't have any speed lines. Where's the other one? Where's the one with the speed lines? I guess I can just copy the speed lines. I'm really messing with my projects here, but it's fine. Um... Does that work? Yeah, that works. So can you play just the, the loop area? So if I do this. There we go. Just do it like that. Looks a bit mad, but we'll take it. Move that all up one track. Yeah, that'll do. There we go, I like that. Um, okay, any more questions? I've got about 10 minutes or so left on the stream today, so I can answer a few more before we before we wrap up. Does, does everybody feel, by the way, I guess just a question, does everybody feel satisfied? <laughs> um, does, it, is, does, it, does everybody feel as though this all makes sense at the moment, that it feels consistent and it all kind of makes sense, like nothing feels like it's any kind of major plot hole or anything? I feel like, I, I, from my perspective, it feels okay, and I like working with you all to decide what's the what's canon, but also try not to put too many restrictions in place so people can't do, you know, little little offshoots and things. And we will be delving into more of the lore later this year, just to confirm. So, we've peeled back the the onion a little bit on all of this. 
the similarity of the vtube debut and the finale so that is that's that's the layer of it that we will explore later on this year there is a comic that i want to make um and then there is also um more that i want to do with with chapter three so we're currently in chapter three at the moment of the of the law which is part vtuber part uh live series and as i mentioned before uh chapter three is called into the data stream and then chapter four as people pointed out earlier in the stream is called fragment wars which now seeing these you understand what the fragments are um or at least you you, mm, you i guess you still yeah okay <laughs> you still don't know what the fragments are in a way um the fragments are still a bit more layered than what is on the surface um what are chapters one and two uh chapter two is called um chap chapter two is simply called life so chapter two was basically the beginning of the death games um chapter two is just called life um and then chapter one is called memory lane which is indicative of evo and the uh the trip down memory lane in the minecraft versions did martin lose fragments in rats because of the multiple lives no surprisingly surprisingly uh that was one of the few that was protected so chew on that one hold on did you write law retroactively well so i've had a so when i started doing the uh the law in last life i basically started making a document of how the watcher listener stuff works uh and this is how many pages of a4 it is including the stuff we've spoken about today i'm up to 12 pages of a4 about the law and the story and that's a very condensed version of it as well um so yeah it's, it's a big old google doc chapter one came before the law starts yeah yeah it wasn't even necessarily retroactively writing the law it was more using the evo stuff as a launch pad to begin you know to, to begin my part of the story so really it was chapter one had already happened and then i was like you know what i actually really like that origin and that beginning of an idea and then boom chapter two onwards was the life series chapter three entered the data stream and then obviously chapter four will be fragment wars there's something that i want to do with chapter four or at least the transition i guess i guess so it's less so the transition into chapter four and more the transition from chapter four into chapter five um but there's a certain something that i would want to do with that and it makes me wish that the vtuber had taken off more than it did um because then i could have really lent into it what do they think of lizzie um i think with lizzie it was they put her in for last life and they found that it was a really big toll on lizzie which is why they didn't bring lizzie back for double life and they used her very sparingly uh oh, oh sorry um they didn't find her too much of a threat when it came to uh limited life um and i think almost the same way it's kind of like scott really it's the watchers kind of took lizzie out of rotation because lizzie wasn't giving them what they wanted if that makes sense um and that's exactly why the listeners decided to choose her and sub her in question why gem i mean that was you gotta remember chat a lot of this stuff happens based around real life <laughs> the content creator side of things um and i just have to make it work with the story you know what i mean um mumbo couldn't take it yeah i think any of the players that have been around and then have gone out and haven't returned yet it's the idea is that it was a very traumatic experience for them their soul is still needs to repair and they didn't deem those players ready to go back into the death games because if they go back in too fragmented and too um sort of broken they stand to ruin the game like they would be unhinged but not to an extent where that is something they could feed on if that makes sense they'd be so deranged that they would almost just be like in a corner just kind of cowering and they would be an easy kill and it's, it's not what the watchers are trying to consume emotions wise they like it when people can be calm and calculated and lie and betray more complex negative human emotion rather than just you know rather than just like emptiness i guess 
Uh, why did the watchers do Evo? There was minimal to no negative emotions in there. So the reason that they did Evo is because that's what they wanted to see. Like, that's what they wanted to see. That's what they wanted to enjoy. Um, they wanted to enjoy that nostalgia. Because back then, um, the watchers that we know of would feed on all emotions. Good, bad, all of them as a mixed bag. And it wasn't until the players decided to flee um, that they got a bit of a bit of a sense of like, oh, actually, negative tastes, negative emotions are actually a bit more prominent. Like they they've got a different taste, a bit a bit of different tang. And then when they did third life, they threw them all into the first death game. Um, they really got a taste of what you know, loss, betrayal, loyalty, heartbreak, all of those things felt like. And then that's when the feeding began more so. Um, <laughs> why is it spicy? So that's why it wasn't really present in Evo, but it's present in the later series is because they stumbled upon that. And that's why they then add added the boogeyman mechanic for Last Life is because they were like, oh, when people turn on each other and people are feeling guilt for having done it or they feel betrayal for it having happened to them, um, those are really spicy emotions. What are the chapters? So chapter one is Memory Lane. Chapter two is called Life. Uh, chapter three is uh, Into the Data Stream. Uh, and chapter four is called Fragment Wars. But we're not we're not at chapter four just yet, just to clarify. We're still very much in chapter three. Um, my mouse has just died, which is good. I'm not going to be able to end the stream if I can't use my mouse. Can we hear the individual countdowns? Uh, they're not that interesting, honestly. So I'm going to say no to that one. Ethos is genuinely probably the most interesting and Grian's was funny. Um, which is why I, I showed those to you. But again, uh, as always, if you do have any further questions, feel free to ask me on Tumblr. Uh, I'm literally just in the Littlewood on there. I've been answering questions about not only my VTuber lore, but also uh, live series stuff. Um, and I enjoy that because a lot of the times you guys will ask questions that I forgot to present information for or you've just asked me for like oh in this scenario or this person like what does the what, what do the watchers think of this person or that person or why didn't this person return and things like that um and it gives me a nice bite-sized exercise as to sort of solidify my thoughts if that makes sense um so it's pretty cool is there a law bit for green not being boogie at all i mean to be fair it, it, it's a nice coincidence isn't it that the one character deemed to actually be a watcher isn't given the satisfaction of being the boogie because because green has that awareness of what the games are and he's actively trying to make them more fun um he's never actually been given it by the other watchers because they don't want to give it to him you know what i mean because it, it's presented as this random thing but actually i think the watchers uh are very selective about who they give um they give it to so it's quite funny. The RNG has worked in our favour. So I'm just looking through if there's any final questions. Somebody was asking for my final thoughts and everything like that. Uh, and I don't know if I have any final thoughts. I guess it's just... I'm just happy that people are enjoying the Watcher Listener stuff. Um, just to reiterate again, this isn't something that Green's involved in at all. Um... Green obviously conceptualized the watches and implemented it and then I ran with the listener stuff after Green left because we needed a vehicle for a bit of drama and we wanted to move spawn points and stuff like that so that's how that all came about but Green Green doesn't participate in any of this future stuff like the best way I framed it is that this is very much just one big alternate universe it's that was the like I said before that was the the, the leap off point the springboard um if the VTuber lore and life series lore are intertwined, how come chapter one and two are based on Evo and life, and chapter three is literally the data stream? So, I can't answer that. <laughs> I can't answer that right now. Um, what I will say, okay, one, okay, okay, okay. How do I word this? I'm thinking. Chapter one has no interfacing with the VTuber stuff chapter two and onwards does um and i would argue that i mean really i would argue that chapter two uh, let 
let me just double check so yeah chapter one chapter two is life and then chapter three is yeah data stream so yeah i would argue that two and three is a weird blend <clears throat> so there's almost a slight transition point between the two but we still have elements of chapter two happening and ripple effects going through chapter three which makes sense it's a, a continual story but yeah I, one thing I, I can say for certain is that the vtuber stuff was not present and there's no retconning or anything needed to make the vtuber stuff work with evo it's only uh intertwined with the life series um so yeah slightly vague answer but there you go but yeah in terms of like does Grian know about what I'm doing with all this lore? Yeah, he knows, but he doesn't He doesn't take any time to learn about it and he doesn't ask me questions about it. He's very happily just letting me, you know, run off into the sunset with my ideas and with everyone in chat here all getting a fever dream about it. <laughs> so there you go. Was it a coincidence that Tango was boogie twice or were the watchers, did the watchers do it on purpose? Um, I mean, realistically, it is RNG in coding but story wise they probably just quite enjoyed watching him suffer and stress and they probably wanted another taste of it they were probably kicking themselves for having not given it to him sooner so they were like you know what give him another go give him another go that'll be fine um do the watchers change the dynamics themselves example etho and b-dubs being friends in last life then being related in limited life no that's very much that's all that's all uh character and player driven um the watchers just like watching things unfold and i think it's why the watchers decide to not get rid of the memories but only get rid of the emotions is because if they got rid of the memories people would very likely be doomed to repeat the same patterns again and again i guess i have thought about that previously because i always compared it to how um spoilers if you've not watched the good place but you know how eleanor and chidi always find each other every time they always figure out that it's the bad place blah 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 it's that kind of thing of you know people at their core their hard zeros and ones their absolute you know nucleus of their being their soul will always find each other similar to how joel knew lizzie was there straight away um so the reason they let people retain their memories is because they also want a change of pace and a change of scenery and cha a change of allies um much like um you know anybody would do they remember evo or hermitcraft okay so we have spoken about this previously evo is evo is like part of the actual timeline whereas a lot of other smps are more so i don't know if dreams is the right word but they're a different plane i guess so like Hermitcraft and stuff is a different plane to what happens uh, in the series. So Evo is an actual memory uh, and is actually something that has happened. Whereas I feel like the I feel like Hermitcraft and other SMPs where they retain their memories from are almost like I guess a bit like plane walking, if you will. I I always imagine that those are happening. So when they're in this unconscious state and falling, they are happening. Um, between the games so they put that like their hermitcraft existence or their empire's existence is on pause whilst they are woken up from this state and go into the life uh series and that that is a point that we will elaborate on further in future lore drops and then if you remind me of this moment now i'll be like oh yeah this is what i meant by that so i'm speaking in vagities but it, it, it is thought about it's not parallel universes no no it's not parallel universes Plane, plane walking is probably the best way to describe it. Um, that's, that's the only terminology I think closely fits it. Um, but yeah. Wouldn't people start to question all of it if they keep their memories of all the death games? Probably. Probably. I don't know if they necessarily um question it too much i don't think they would think about a wider more ominous picture but they would certainly start to be like we do a lot of this but again it'd be so easy to put a put some flex tape on that and say oh actually like this is just deemed as like you know a gathering that they have you know what i mean like i, I haven't thought too much about that avenue which is why i'm not giving you anything 
Um, uh, I'm, I'm not giving you too concrete of an answer there, but I think the more and more the games happen, they would they would start to get a bit like, mm, why do we keep doing this? <laughs> but I think because the negative emotions are stripped away each time, it's seen as just like a bit of sport. They always end up coming back. They're all healed afterwards. They're their usual selves. Um, so I think it's almost seen as sport. It's, it's almost like a bit of a bit of a side quest, a bit of a you know fun day out, if you will. They're too distracted by the death game to think about why. Yeah, yeah. Will the listeners be able to communicate with Martin next season? Like the re uh, the recollect recollection during in between games? Uh, no, probably not. Like I said before, in this state, he's not actually taking anything in. It's a very unconscious existence. Um, time passes like that uh, between the, the life games. How much time they actually spend in this freefall, we don't know. But um, yeah, that is all for today. Speaking of freefall, thank you very much for watching, everybody. Hopefully that gave you some nice insights, some hints, some teasers, some tips, some clarity on stuff. As I've mentioned before, limited life, uh, you know, finale was really, really fun. If you've got any more questions, throw them over to me on Tumblr. Um, keep on theorizing. I use some of the theories as like landmines to avoid and some of them I'm like, oh, that's a cool idea. Maybe try and put my own spin on that. So I definitely draw inspiration from the things that you guys do, which is really cool. Uh, but thank you for helping me commit stuff to the canon. Uh, let's find somebody to raid now, shall we? And just for anybody wondering, I will throw this whole stream up on in the Littlewood Live, so it is there for for future preservation. Uh, who are we going to raid? Let's go and raid. Mm. Trying to see who's playing Minecraft right now. Uh, let's see. Let's go and raid. Oh, Cherry's live right now. Let's go raid Cherry. That's really funny. So Cherry, if you don't know, is the thumbnail artist. Uh, and also, um, I've been using Cherry as a soundboard for all of my lore thinkings and thoughts and feelings uh, the last kind of like couple days or even, even the last couple of weeks, really. Um, but yeah, they made the animatic at the end of the finale. They made all the thumbnails. Um, same for Rats as well. Made all the thumbnails for that. So yeah, go and enjoy Cherry's stream, show them some love, and I will see you all next time. Goodbye. <laughs>